Player discretion is advised. A quick and relatively obvious disclaimer, this will have spoilers for all of the endings and for the whole game of House as of version 1.3. There are many films and games that centre the story around the repetition of a particular time in which the character is stuck in. Look no further than the cult classic Groundhog Day from 1993, or for something more recent, Black Mirror's Bandersnatch Choose Your Own Adventure title in 2018, which saw the main character waking up and repeating the same day, and with the help of yourself, making different choices each time to see where that took him. Games do this too. The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask is a prime example, arriving in Termina, of which Link has three days to save this land before the moon crashes into it, destroying everything and everyone. Then everything resets, and Link is back outside the clock tower from which the story began. I've got to say, there's something truly compelling about these Groundhog Day style of storytelling, especially in games, and this is no more true than with the 2D indie pixel horror game House by Bark Bark Games, released on the 30th of October in 2020. The game tells you nothing as you begin. You get the title screen of the main protagonist, Tabby, in her bed. You wake her up by hitting the relevant key, and thus your first day begins. Right there, you are left to your own devices to explore and find out what this game is about, if there even is any lore or story behind it, and moreover, what you actually have to do to get to the end. With the latest version 1.3 update, the devs have helped in that regard as Tabby now keeps a journal by her bed that updates when you enter certain rooms or achieve certain endings. Now this gives you more of a goal to fill in the journal and discover the story behind this family and more importantly, this house. You get the first journal entry when you wake up which tells you this family just moved into this house. This journal entry also provides us with our first foreshadowing of the fourth wall breaking aspects that this game has. Tabby states, I can't tell if I'm awake or if I'm dreaming. These days are starting to blur together. This is, as you will find out upon getting an ending or dying, you, or rather Tabby, wakes up again on the exact same day where the exact same things happen. Mum is boarding up the bedroom door to hide a secret from her children. Tabby's sister Melody goes off to play the piano under a suspect chandelier. There's a giant rat in the basement that wants to eat you, and your mum slips on a puddle from the kitchen ceiling that has built up over the course of the day, thus killing her. I don't stand around too long in there though. The time then quickly passes and 6pm then rolls around and things start to change. Ghosts start to chase you, the music goes sombre and dark. The rug in the hallway becomes the spike trap from Fortnite, and if you're lucky enough to survive all that, you get a visit from Daddy, who if you're not adequately prepared, proceeds to stab your eyes out. And upon waking up, you will receive the second journal entry, which is labelled, aptly, as dying. At first it hurt, but I'm starting not to feel it. I can't even tell what's real anymore. I've woken up on the same day, 30 times now. This tells you how many times you've died, and more specifically the fact that Tabby remembers each time she's died and each time she's woken up on the same day. So it's fair to say that this house is not a comfortable place to live in. But there's far more going on here than just a creepy house and some ghosts, including that grandma that seems to give us the finger randomly. Let's move on to one of the endings, and Melody and Toby situation, which I guess in game, based on the journal entry, you would call the song ending or the sister ending. And to get this ending, you have to make sure that your sister Melody stays alive throughout the day. No one else is relevant in this. So that includes grabbing the axe from the rat room, breaking down mum and dad's bedroom, and there you will see a rug to which you drop the bowling ball down to see a small basement with the corpse of a boy who from the journal entry that we get, we learn, is Toby. Melody hasn't been the same since it happened. Mother tries to pretend it didn't. I can still smell him rotting through the walls. This only implies that the father murdered him, 
We confirm it when we take the slingshot from Toby's corpse and speak to our sister whilst holding it who tells us. That's Toby's. I'll never forgive father for what he did. Also, if you continue talking to her, she tends to take you through everything that she hates, like bowling, the axe, the walls, this room, this house, herself, but she also states that she hates what she saw, which I think wraps up pretty nicely what happened to Toby, adding that when you see his ghost in the true ending, he tells you that I never should have come to this house, as well as Melody always hated bowling, we bonded over that. So what I think we can say for sure is that early on into their move into this house, Melody invited her friend slash boyfriend, it's not really stated, Toby, over to the house. Her father, controlled by the curse of the house, killed Toby and threw him into the basement whilst Melody saw it all happen in front of her. The mother covers it up and acts as if nothing happened as the journal entry tells us, as well as her insistence on boarding up her bedroom every single day. This is also probably part of the reason why we see her drinking in the kitchen in the latter part of the day. But everything surrounding Toby shows us why Melody is depressed and why she hates everything. She saw her dad murder someone close to her for no reason. So all she does now is play the piano which is why she's so sad, where if you destroy the piano before she plays it, she gets so upset about it, because that's the only other thing that she has. Now getting back to the ending, if we destroy the piano before it falls on top of her, she'll proceed to go to the toilet. Now we can't let her go to the toilet, especially if you read the journal entry that tells us about it. There's something in there. I can hear it whispering to me. It wants me to do horrible things. Maybe it will stop if I listen. But in other words, don't leave the toilet unsmashed and flush it because you will probably die. So when you smash up the toilet with the axe, Melody will then proceed to go to her room, where, because she has lost pretty much everything that she values in her life, she decides to take her own life. But to stop her from taking her own life, we need to also destroy that step which she uses to hang herself. After that, she then just sits in her bed. Now this is where the fourth wall breaking dolly comes in handy. Aside from taking her around the rooms, making sarcastic comments about everything, she also used to belong to Melody when she was younger. You give Melody dolly, and then upon your father's return, something in your sister changes. All three of you go out to the living room, and your sister plays the song. Which upon getting the journal entry for that ending the next day, tells you, I remember when father would hum that song to us before bed. It always put us at ease. It just hurts my ears now. So it's a song with importance to those kids and this family, and is why it clearly stopped the father from attacking when he came home. And as the ending tells us, it burns the dark away from him, and the curse lifts. Unfortunately, this is not enough, as Dolly talks to us in the post credit clip, telling us to stop. We're wasting our time. And at one point she says, I don't even care anymore. I was just trying to help you. Almost like she's just trying to stop us from continuing to play the game. Her motives aren't really clear until we achieve the true ending, but I'll get back to her later. The next ending is the father ending, in which you just need to kill the father, so you grab the shotgun from his closet, as well as the two and only bullets in the game, as well as hanging onto that bear trap, because you need three different things to be able to take him out. I'm going to eat your face. Father! Alright, there's one. There's two. Oh, I took the cat out as well. There's three! There's three, baby! 
I took the cat out with you. I really wish I'd done that. You fall to your knees, exhausted. The father is dead. The darkness retreats, but somewhere distant, a fleshy heartbeat continues. The journal entry you get for after murdering him is just Tabby questioning who her father is. He's not human anymore. I don't know what he is, but it's not him. Is it strange that I felt relief after? Now the toilet and bloodshed journal entries go hand in hand, as this is essentially the kill everyone ending. So after you've killed one of the cat, rat, mum or sister, you go and flush the toilet and the toilet monster of the house begins to speak to you. What's this? A child? Hmm. I sense potential in you. One last soul remains, but where? That is telling you that you need to finish off the rest of the house essentially. So once you murder your family, which includes the cat, rat, mum and sister, the house beckons to us and we become a part of it. Father comes home and embraces us as we have succumbed to the house and given in to its curse. As the ending tells us, the darkness swallows you both, leaving nothing behind. You receive the journal article Bloodshed upon doing this ending. I thought it would be harder than it was, to think that the sight of blood made me queasy before. Now it feels as natural as breathing. Showing that spending all this time in this house is changing Tammy, and maybe for the worse. The penultimate ending is where you save everyone from death, so the opposite of the previous ending, which rewards you with a happy ending of your whole family, even the giant rat eating in the kitchen. Weird, I know. The endless gnawing dread replaced with a warm meal and you return to your old familiar life. Though unfortunately, this is only for a brief moment in the cyclical time of this game, as the journal article tells us. I did everything. For a brief moment, everything was back to normal. It didn't matter. I still woke up again in this room. I can't take much more of this. So having done all of this, the way is now paved for the true ending of this game. And this can only be achieved once all of the other journal entries have been found and the other endings met. And one thing I didn't notice first time around is that after each of these endings, the clock face in the hallway continues to change until red cracks appear on its face. So once you grab that axe and smash it, time freezes in the game. For the first time, the once cyclical repetition of this day stopped in an instant. You are then greeted by a number of strange creatures that proceed to try and suck out your soul. Ah, oh no god! Help me escape the house. Nope. Each of the different rooms have a new enemy to which you have to destroy to progress in this new ending. The eyes in the parents room, a mouth in the rat room, and fingers in the piano room. You could go as far as to say that these are the fleshy embodiment of the house's organs. The eyes ever watching, the mouth that whispers secrets in your ears, the fingers that force you and your family into unspeakable acts. So once you have taken all of those out, that chain that you see with a hole in the middle of the living room starts to move up and then shows us the beating heart of the house. Shoot that with your last bullet and the house reverberates in a crescendo of noise sending Tabby down below. Not knowing exactly where we are aside from below the house. Tabby staggers around, and the only thing she sees are puppets lying on the floor. A puppet of our mother, of the rat, of us. And then we see the puppets of our sister and father being controlled by 
something, someone, some man, which can only be the living embodiment of the curse that plagues this house. This guy. Okay. You mustn't leave. We've been having so much fun. You need me. But Tabby is stronger than he is. And upon killing him, we once again, as the same with all the other endings, have a talk with Dolly. But let's finish the ending first before we get to her. We are greeted with the shot of Tabby, who appears older now I think, staring off at the house in the distance. To which she says, It feels like so long ago. That house. My family. My arm. It felt like a dream. Like I wasn't in control. But I'm free. I'm moving on my own now. Oh, what a beautiful day. That comment there, I'm moving on my own now, is a nod to the house and the player. The house, that guy, controlled the family with its puppets, forcing the father to murder, the mother to drink herself to sleep every night, the sister to commit suicide. Whereas, we controlled Tabby. She was our puppet, and now that we broke the curse and finished the game, she's finally moving on her own, with no help from us and our mouse and keyboard. Now, back to Dolly. Who proceeds to tell us that we're a fool, and verbally attacks us, and then backtracks and apologises. Oh wait, stop, there's no hard feelings, right? Okay, okay, I lied, it, it does end, please. Almost as if she is holding back the true ending, because she doesn't want us to go. Or rather, she does not want to go. Now what I mean by this, is that should you replay another ending after the true ending of the game, so once you have the true ending of the game, Dolly, who would always show up post credits to talk to us and tell us we're being stupid or to stop or whatever, is dead. She's not moving. She's still on the floor. Like she's back to being a normal doll. And why is that? Because we broke the curse of the house. The house gave her her ability to speak and interact. And by destroying the curse, we essentially have destroyed Dolly's existence. She may know it's a game, but this game gives her life. And that's why she wanted us to stop playing. Because she could live on in her strange existence, rather than being an inanimate object left lifeless on the floor. But she still talks to you in the game if you replay it. No because if you read the final journal entry that you get for finishing the game and the true ending, it tells you, sometimes I find myself dreaming about this place. I can feel it pulling me back, like I never even left. But I remind myself, this time it's just a dream, an old memory. It's just a dream. That is so important. So every single time that you replay House on Steam, after achieving the true ending, it is purely a dream that Tabby is having in her life afterwards. Nothing more. She can dream that Dolly is talking to her, she can dream she kills her dad, but none of it matters now, because the important thing is that she got out of that house through the true ending, and that any replays after that aren't actually happening. So some serious fourth wall breaking aspects to this game. And I must, I must say I'm so impressed with this game. And it continues to be updated by the way, so there might be more to come from this game. 
For the record, I still don't know what the rubber ducky in the bathroom does, aside from the comment that Dolly makes about how she hates it, like Melody hates everything. And also, if there's any more to the, the grandmother, that, that's my assumption, that's who she is anyway, who appears in front of Tabby in random runs uh, and swears at us. If anyone knows anything about that, please do let me know in the comments. But thank you guys so much for watching another one of these explain deep dive videos that I like to go into. House is definitely one of my favourite games that I've played recently and I really recommend everyone having a go at it and trying to get all the endings. It's very cool and the game continues to be updated with new artwork, new items, new stuff, lots of new stuff uh, I think continues to, to come from this game. So watch this space because we may still be playing it. But um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this discussion video. Thank you guys so much as always for watching. And remember, if you're moving into a new house, check the toilet first because you never know what's down there. Mm -hmm.